This year's been unusual compared to some of the earlier years in that we haven't seen the jellyfish that are typically here in August and September when the leatherbacks are here. We've been looking at Monterey Bay over 20 years or so, and uh, um, something happened in 97, 98 that changed it from being a less productive ocean to being a more productive ocean. And that condition has sort of remained till now. The unusual thing the last couple of years, beginning particularly in 2005, is the upwelling didn't commence in April and May like it normally did. It's like setting the salad bar up at 10.30 uh, at night, and well, it's too late for the dinner party. Um, second possibility is that there's been a change in the, the type of cells. Mm -hmm. So it may be uh, still a lot of prior productivity, but instead of nice, nice leafy lettuce, all they put out is some cabbage and cauliflower, and it's not as attractive. Um, third possibility is that the grazers that normally are out there to feed on these things that kind of really set the base of the food chain, um, something has happened to those. Mm -hmm. So that they've been removed from the system. There's a lot of prior productivity, but there's nothing really to eat it. Water temperature is warm from 13.3 to 15.5, in just the little distance we've made from Half Moon Bay up here to the uh, Gulf of the Farallons. We're uh, just offshore of Pacifica right now. In addition to looking for leatherback turtles, we're looking for leatherback turtle habitat. And for us, leatherback habitat is characterized by this kind of brownish red colored water. Typically, these would be perfect conditions to find leatherbacks in, but without the jellyfish, they're just, it's just brown, warm water. We've learned a lot from the turtles that we have tracked. We've got two turtles right now. One had a transmitter put on it in the nesting beaches in Indonesia, and it's come all the way across the Pacific. It looked like it was going to come into Monterey Bay, but conditions weren't right for it, so it's turned up north and is way offshore, about 120 miles or so. The animals spend a large portion of their time swimming across the middle of the Pacific, which is rare to see them. And we even have fishermen here in, in California that have spent their lives on the, on the ocean fishing and will swear to you that leatherbacks do not occur here. So even though they're there, they're even difficult to see. They're pretty cryptic species. They're not showing very much of the surface, so that's why we need the help of the aircraft to uh, zero in on the uh, presence of animals out here. Last year we would go on one survey and see up to 15 to 18 turtles in one day. This year we haven't seen any. We see a very big drop in the numbers of humpback whales and blue whales that we would normally see off our coastline now have pretty much disappeared and are not coming here to forage. And it's not because of El Nino, which is one of the factors that usually affects productivity. It's completely dependent on this year upon changes in the atmospheric conditions that have set up this um, very different year. Every time we do this and we, we get those data, um, we make progress in understanding why the leatherbacks are here and why they're not here as well. That's important to know. The upwelling is driven by the winds, which are part of a global process. We are pretty confident that What's going on here locally is tied into some perturbation that's going on worldwide in the atmosphere. What we don't know is whether it's part of some natural cycle, whether it's an interaction with some other part of the planet where there's some unusual climate activity, or whether it's a precursor or possibly part of, of um, the, new and, the new climate we're facing as anthropogenic climate change becomes more and more of a factor.